Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm super excited because I'm finally going to be doing a client tutorial. Um, my friend let me film her for this look and I've been wanting to do one of these for a while now. And if you guys do like these types of like transformation videos, definitely let me know so I can do more. So I'm actually just starting off by filling in her brows. I always use my Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. And for her, I did use the shade Soft Brown. She already has really nice and full brows. So I just went in and kind of defined them and filled them in a little bit. Next, I'm going to go in and carve out the eyebrows. I'm using my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer for this step. It's my favorite one to use. I also like to go in with my e.l.f. 16-hour um, Camo Concealer. I kind of switch between those two concealers, but those are my top two favorites. Just because of really full coverage. And I really love this brush also. Um, I'll have everything linked down below. I'll try to link all the brushes. Um, but yeah, I just like to clean up the brows always because I feel like that really like defines them and makes them look super clean. And then I do like to um, drag that concealer onto the lid. And then I'll also go in with a fluffy brush just to really blend out those edges and blend out the concealer. I hope you guys don't mind that this video is going to be um, kind of long. It's going to be like 25 minutes, but I really didn't want to like cut out. Too many parts of the video and I did have to speed it up a little bit just because I didn't want it to be like a whole hour long um, but yeah I just wanted you guys to be able to see everything that I do so then here I also went in and cleaned up the top of the brow and then I did just go in with the fluffy brush just to blend out that concealer Here I did go in with a little bit of the ABH eye primer. Um, I didn't use too much just because the shadows that we're doing are pretty light. Like this is a pretty light and natural look. Um, but I do like to use it just because it does, it does really like bring out the pigmentation of the eyeshadow. So yeah, I just went in with a little bit. And the palette that I used for her look today was the... Um, Dose of Colors Frankation Palette. It's a collab with Desi and Katie. This palette is definitely my go-to. I really love the matte shadows in that palette, especially the brown tones. They just have like a really nice color and I always like gravitate towards that palette. Even if I like don't use all the colors in it, I definitely always use like the browns as transition colors because they're really good. And I'm basically just using a fluffy brush and applying it all over like her crease area. Here I did start going in with the medium brown eyeshadow in the palette and I am applying it to the outer part of the eye and then kind of dragging it into the crease as well. So here I went in with the darkest brown shadow in the palette and I did start to build up the color in the crease a little bit more. This look is definitely all about blending the shadows together and making everything look really seamless. I really wanted to go for like a soft glam look. If you guys have any other looks you want to see on clients, definitely let me know because I'm open to filming that for you guys. Just drop a comment down below of what you would like to see. 
also the lighter eyeshadow that I used I did start off with a fluffy brush but the darker that the shadow gets I do switch off to smaller brushes just because I kind of want it to have like the gradient effect and I don't want to just like mix everything together so I just want the darkest color in the crease and then the more lighter one on the outer part of the crease so if you did notice I did start using smaller brushes with the dark colors. Okay, so here I did go in with the really light nude um, eyeshadow in the palette. It's almost like a white, but it has kind of like a pink tint to it. And I used that in the center of the eye just to kind of give like a little bit of a halo effect. Um, so like her inner part of her eye can like stand out. If you guys know what I mean, I don't really know how to explain it. But I just kind of wanted the crease to be darker than the lid. And then I am going to add like a tiny pop of shimmer on the lid as well. Okay, so here I did go in with the darkest brown shadow in the palette and I'm using that to smoke out her lash line. Um, I didn't want to do liner because I felt like it was going to look too harsh. So this dark brown eyeshadow works really nice to kind of define the lash line and make it look a little bit more smoky. Okay, so here's where I decided to add a little bit of like shimmer and sparkle just to really like glam it up a little bit. I felt like I just wanted it to have a little bit of glow. So I did use the shimmer in the palette, which was like a really soft shimmer. And then I just used a little bit of this liquid eyeshadow. It's from Milani. I just dabbed on like a tiny bit because this one is really reflective and I didn't want it to be like too dramatic. Um, but like I said, I'll have the products that I used in the description box. Okay, so here I'm moving on to her face. I already cleaned her face with a makeup wipe. And this is kind of like a moisturizer slash primer. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard of it. It's the Ember Lease one. I'll have it in the description box. I feel like a lot of makeup artists use this primer slash moisturizer. Um, she said she has dry skin so I went in with that one and I normally do use this one for all my clients and then like if you're oily I use a mattifying primer like in your t-zone but she says she has dry skin so I use this one all over her face and I just blended that out with a brush here I added another primer from Lancome she mentioned that this primer works really good on her face so I added that for her um, I don't know how to pronounce the name of this primer, but again, I'll have it linked down below. And that primer that I used on her works really well to like smooth out the face and like fill in the pores and it just leaves like a really soft canvas. So I added that like where her pores are a little bit bigger just in the center of her face and kind of like in the T-zone area. For foundation, um, she did want to use her own foundation. It was the Frankie Rose one and um, it is a little bit darker than like her face and her chest but she does like self tan so we went ahead and added that to her chest also later in the video um, but that foundation gave her like a really nice finish um, and then I did just go in with my makeup sponge to blend all of that out. I really like to take my time applying her foundation and just blending everything out with the sponge 
I personally like using a sponge for the foundation. I feel like it just gives a really beautiful finish. Um, sometimes I'll use a brush, like a small fluffy brush for the concealer just because it's um, a little bit easier to get into like that area of the eye. But definitely I love using sponges for like anything that's on the face. So here I'm obviously just blending out some of that foundation onto her chest area and then I did add a little bit of a strobe cream from Milani. Um, I'll go ahead and have it linked down below. It's nothing like super dramatic, it just gives like a really subtle glow to the chest area. So after foundation, I always like to go in with cream contour. For this, I do use the Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation sticks. Um, I like to use them as cream contours because they're really blendable and I like the shade range. Uh, for her, I did use two of the contour sticks. One of them is in the shade Shadow, um, which is meant to be like for contouring. And then another one I used is in the shade, I believe it's Cool Beige. I'll have it linked down below with the names. Um, but I always use those two shades for like lighter complexions. I feel like it gives a really nice, still warm, but not super warm, like contoured look. So I do like to take that cream contour on the cheekbones and then I do like to blend that out onto her forehead. And as you can tell, I didn't apply the contour sticks directly onto her face. I feel like that just makes it harder for me to blend. I do just like to grab the product with my brush and then blend it out on the face. And as you can see, it's nothing like too harsh or dramatic and everything just looks really pretty and bronzed. So now I'm going in with concealer. Again, I use the Tarte Shape Tape for her and then I do apply that on with the brush. And then I do let it sit for a little bit on her face just so that it can get a little bit dry, not too much. Um, I don't like to blend it out when it's super wet. I feel like it just like blends everywhere and I don't like that. Um, but here I am going with the same shades that I used to contour with a smaller brush and just kind of defining her nose a little bit more. So here I'm going in and blending out the concealer with the same sponge that I used for her foundation. And then I do want to mention that um, the powders that I used to bake her face were from Beauty Bakery. And actually I think it was just the Beauty Bakery powder. And I do like to um, have that ready so that I can apply it onto her concealer as soon as, soon as I finish just so that it doesn't crease and everything um, looks flawless. And then I did like to use a fluffy brush just to blend out the, the outer parts of the concealer just because I feel like it's a little bit easier under that area. Um, and I've been doing this actually lately and I feel like it's really helpful and everything just looks really seamless and pretty. Once I finish blending out her concealer on her under eye, I do like to go back in with my sponge just to make sure everything is super flawless and there's no creases under her eye and then right away I like to go in with the powder to set her under eye. So yeah, here I'm just setting her under eye and this is like my favorite part. I don't know why I love using like setting powder. Everything just like comes together and I love like how it just looks. And I do just like to take a little bit more and then just apply it closer to the lower lash line just to make sure there's no creases. And then really just take my time um, pushing in the powder and giving her like a really flawless, seamless look.
And here I'm just taking a little bit more powder and applying it um, to the sides of her nose just to kind of give her like a contour, more of like a snatched nose. And I feel like that looks really pretty on her. And like on all my clients, I always like to do like nose contour and baking. Here I'm going in with my favorite bronzer for light skin tones. It's from Milani. It's the Dolce Bronzer. I feel like it's a really nice warm tone and it just looks really beautiful. And then I do like to use the shade Soleil for darker complexions. I also want to mention that she obviously was wearing eyelash extensions, um, but normally on clients who want lashes, um, I always do the lashes once I finish the eyeshadow and before I start anything on the face just because I feel like sometimes like they'll blink too hard and like the mascara will get on their under eye or like sometimes their eyes will tear up a little bit or anything like that and I just want to make sure like the eyes are like done with before I start the face just so that like it can't mess up because sometimes like I said the mascara can transfer or anything like that so I just feel like it's helpful to like do the lashes after, um, before you do like their face. So now I'm going to be contouring her face with a little bit of a darker tone. I'm using the Silhouette Contour Palette by The Makeup Shack. And the shade that I use on her is the shade Ashed. And yeah, I just applied that on her cheekbones. Um, yeah, just to give her a little bit more contour. So next I went ahead and brushed off that powder that we used to bake under her eyes and we're gonna move on to blush I've been so obsessed with the Kylie blushes lately for her I'm using the shade close to perfect I believe that's what it's called um, but it's super cute I really love that shade on her and then um, I've been using the kitten baby one and I'm like darker skin tone and it looks like really light on the pan but it gives you like a really beautiful finish so definitely recommend those are really good and then i'm using the same powder to clean up her contour and then i do let that sit for a little bit just to really give her like that contoured look i really like to define it and then um, blend it out with the brush after Here I'm going in with the darker contour shade that I used just to kind of define her nose a little bit and using a smaller brush to kind of scope it out. Here, um, as you can tell, I already applied a little bit of eyeshadow on her lower lash line just because my camera did cut off for some reason. But I'm using the same shadows that I used in her crease and really keeping it close to her lash line. Um, and then I'm using the ColourPop um, gel liner in her waterline. I feel like this really opens up her eyes and gives like a really pretty look. I don't know, I do this like on all my clients because I feel like I just love it so much and I do it on myself like every day. Um, and then I'm just going in with some mascara on her lower lashes. So now I'm just going in with some eyebrow gel just to really fluff, fluff up her brows. And my favorite one to use is by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's just their clear brow gel. I don't like to use tinted brow gel just because I feel like it makes the brows too dark, especially if I already used product on the brow. So yeah, I just like to stick to the clear one. Here I'm just going in with some inner corner highlight. I believe I used a Huda Beauty palette. Um, I never skip this step because I feel like it definitely opens up the eyes. And 
then here I'm using the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. And then I did notice that I like smudged something on her chin. I believe it was like probably like mascara that was on my hand or something. But anytime that happens, I like to like kind of scratch it off with the mascara wand and then go over it with my sponge and then um, put powder over it. So now I'm just highlighting her face. I'm using the Huda Beauty palette that I mentioned earlier, the same one that I used for the inner corner. And then I do just like to apply it on the nose, the upper lip, and then obviously on her cheekbones. I don't like to do like too much highlight. That's just like my personal preference. And I do like to do the highlight after the setting spray just to make sure her face isn't like too powdery or too dry. And I also feel like it makes the highlight like stand out a little bit more and look more glowy. So this is pretty much what the makeup looks like so far. Um, we basically just need to do the lips. So for her, I did go in with the Kylie Cosmetics Lip Liner. And I used the shade Coconut. And I really love these lip liners. They're super creamy. And I did overline her lips a bit just because she does like that more like full look. For her lip color, I did use one from NYX. I just don't remember the name off the top of my head, but I'll have it in the description box. And then I did top it off with some gloss. The gloss that I used is from Iconic London, and it's in the shade Nearly Nude. So yeah guys, that pretty much wraps up the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more of these videos and other videos that I have coming up. If you guys have made it all the way to the end of this tutorial, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys in my next video.